feeling all right there, buddy? Oh, I feel dizzy. I still maintain that you should go to rehab. What? No, I mean, not that. It's this stupid thing. I have no idea what I was doing, nor what I want or wanted to do in the first place. Yeah, that's a complete mess, but why are you using it like that? Because apparently I'm an ignorant buffoon, you pompous ass! Valid jab and point taken, but um, I can help you make more sense of it and make it more like a functional tool, if that's something that you like. Yes, thank you. Alrighty then, let's start. All right, so what is the problem with the control center? Problem is that by default, it is a complete mess. On its own, when you just look at it in its isolation, you may kind of think like, what's the problem here, right? So you have all of this stuff and that's pretty much it. Well, seemingly, yes, but the way that it's organized and the way that it's done by default is basically garbage. This is especially true if you take into account that there are also users who own multiple books devices wanting to stay in the same ecosystem and taking advantage of the cross-platform synchronization and having a smaller device for portability and a larger device for office type of uh, work. And herein lies the problem because you start and you think that it's going to be all the same and maybe you learn all of your icons where they are on your smaller device, you get your larger device and then you encounter something like this. E-Ink Center in the same place, rotate, auto-rotate. Well, first of all, they're not named the same, but it's the same icon, so close enough. I guess that's the standard that we're looking for here. Then we get feedback, mm, screencast. Then we get navigation ball, mm, notification mute. AI assistant, well, it's not present on tab X. So we have hand touch instead. Split screen, split screen down there. Free mark, no free mark here because it doesn't have that option. Quick note, screen recorder, on and on and on. And you may think like, well, why are you showing these two devices? Clearly this one is newer, right? Well, yeah, but they're both running the same OS 3.5.4. Look at this. This is a complete mess. So what's the core of the problem here? Well, the core of the problem is that the control center by default is basically an overwhelming chaos of unorganized distraction. And it becomes that distraction because a simple operation that should be just a convenience, that's why the control center is there, can easily take the focus away from the main task that you were performing uh, to begin with. So we've identified the problem. What's our goal? Well, the goal is to modify the control center in such a way that it becomes familiar, intuitive, simple, so that it allows us over time to build muscle memory. And if we get to the stage that we do build muscle memory, then we have successfully transformed the control center from the overwhelming chaos of unorganized distraction to a genuinely useful and productive tool. So that is our goal. So how do we go about that? Well, step number one is you need to learn how to customize your control center. And thankfully, this is a really, really simple operation that is uh, pretty much consistent across all the platforms. So I'm gonna be focusing on a single device from now on. In order to customize the control center, you need to swipe uh, down from the upper right corner of the device to expose it. And then you have this edit icon. The edit icon is a pen with an underscore uh, next to it. So when you tap on it, that will expose the settings or the customization panel for the control center. And in here, if you have followed my previous videos of customizing the toolbars, the actions are exactly the same. You need to press and hold an icon and drag it down into the unused icons here, which are the underneath the line. So the icons displayed above the line are the ones that are going to be, to be displayed on the control center. The ones underneath are going to be hidden away. So let's try and move one of them. Uh, let's say AI assistant, because it is completely useless. We will move it down here. And if we now go back all the way here and we check it, we'll see that AI assistant is gone. So that's all it takes. You just go to the edit, you press and hold and rearrange icons to visible and hidden. Now that we know how, we need to think about 
uh, what it is that we want to achieve and how do we get there. My advice would be to start with the absolute bare minimum using the ethos of less is more and avoid duplication. So those two would be the absolute primary focus points of my organizational methods for the control center. So obviously this is not the bare minimum. Where do we even start? You start with the duplicated stuff that you don't need. For example, e-ink center is the first one there, but in your gesture settings by default, one of the swipe ups, swipe up left, will also get you to the same thing. So swipe up left, I get to the e-ink center, swipe down here, tap on it, I get to the same thing, but just with one extra step. Not really that practical in most cases. Sometimes some users may want to have it for genuinely good reasons and that's fine, but I'm just saying like what the overall and general approach should be. So let's start with the e-ink center that I don't need. So I'm going to remove the e-ink center all the way down here. And another advice that I would give you is when you're performing these actions, switch to A2 mode just to have an easier type of interaction when not have the refresh mode kind of uh, slowing things down. All right, so we got e-ink center down. The next thing that I'm going through all of these is basically I'm asking myself, is it a duplicate of something that I already have as a gesture uh, elsewhere in the system? And is this something that I use at all? So for now, you're just asking yourself the question, is it something that I'm using at all? And I'm gonna go row by row. Autorotate, I need feedback. Uh, I'm using it, but I'm gonna use it from the system. So I don't really care about that. Navigation ball, I don't use it at all. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Free mark may be a useful thing for something. So I'm gonna put a mental note in my head that's like, hey, that could be a thing to get back to at some point. Kids mode, nope, I'm not using kids mode. Quick notes for now, I'm leaving it there. Books drop screen mirroring. Screen mirroring, I might use at some point in time, especially for a device like this, so I'm just gonna leave it. Split screen, I definitely use it a lot. Screenshot and scrolling screenshot, I don't use it often, but I do need it. Full refresh, I have full refresh mapped as a gesture, so I don't need it, that is a duplication. Then we have screen recorder, definitely a useful thing. Hand touch general on and off. As a general thing, I have it set up on a per uh, app, like the Neo Reader and the eNode basis. So it's not something that I'm gonna be using actively, but like the free mark thing, I'm gonna just put it down here and put a mental note, but I'm gonna do something else as well. In the hidden ones, I'm going to move the free mark all the way up to here so that it's just behind or next to the hand touch. So that my two icons that, or two functions that I've put a mental note in are actually first in line of the hidden ones. Then I'm gonna go to continue here, mute notifications. Yes, I have it set, so I do need that. Do not disturb, mm, I could use it, but I know that I'm not gonna be use it on, uh, using it on this device. And also because I know from the previous video that I showed you, where you customize your notifications, I know that I can get to do not disturb fairly easily by long pressing the uh, speaker icon and adjusting it there. So I don't really need it here. I'm not turning it on and off on a daily basis. Location, I turn it off and then I leave it off like that. I will never use the hotspot. And I can see now that I've started to introduce a boo-boo. Airplane mode, I may use it or maybe not use it and books drop option. All right, so that is my first pass of organizing the control center. So I'm gonna do the second pass of uh, organizing and editing my control center. And here I'm gonna keep in mind everything from before, but I'm going to add two more things as a focal point. I'm going to introduce organization uh, of the order of where the icons are, and I'm gonna organize them in the order according to priority, similarity, and frequency of use. This is something that will change over time, but you start with what your thoughts are to begin with, and you know that you can adjust it at any given point in time in the future. So let's start with the editing process here. I know that auto rotation is something that I use very, very frequently, if not the most. The next one to it, I would like to have the split screen, because split screen is something that I use 
extremely often on this tablet because of the uh, yeah big real estate. Now the quick notes. I'm now doing a quick the second pass of iteration. Do I need it or not? And for me, I don't. Why don't I need it? And I actually don't want quick notes here because I keep organization of my folder structure and of my notes and of my documents. And they are organized according to the folder structure that I have here. And quick notes, if you tap it, it will simply create quickly a new note and tap it into the root of the folder, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that if that suits you. But for me personally, it doesn't suit me. I don't want that extra step of trying to find it, name it and doing all of those things. So I'm going to actually remove this as a full-on option for me so that I don't get tempted by it. Then the next thing that I'm going to add here are other operational things that I may want to use on a regular basis. So what are the most frequent things that I'm going to be using? Well, those are going to be the screenshot, and the scroll scrolling screenshot. So now I end up with the first row of icons in the control center as the ones that are the of primary use and most frequently used functions of the tablet for me and for my use case scenario. All right, let's go to the second row, which is the secondary use case scenario, and I'm gonna look at them as such. And that would be the books drop mirroring and screen recorder. These two for me make sense to go one next to the other because they deal with either mirroring the contents of the screen or capturing the contents of the screen. And at this point, I'm going to rethink my mute notification. Do I need it? So I have to consider when would I need and why would I need the mute notification function here? Well, the only option when I need it is if I find myself often toggling notifications on or off but I'm not doing that. For me, this has a singular purpose. Tap it once, turn the notifications, mute notifications off, and never change it again, because I do not want to do that again. So therefore, since I've already muted the notifications, I'm free to take that away. And that way, I conveniently uh, shorten down the uh, control center to only two rows, primary and secondary functions. And in order to finalize the ordering here, I'm simply going to move the airplane mode as the last one and books drop. I do keep it here because it can be a helpful type of a thing from time to time. So let's see what do we have now. So now I end up with something that is familiar, that is intuitive, simple to use, and it's going to be very, very easy to build muscle memory because this now makes sense. I've arranged them for me at least that the top row are my primary functions and these bottom are secondary functions and they are ordered in a row and next to each other that actually makes sense. So we started from something that's messy looking like this and we end up with something that looks like this and not only the looks that are important that it takes less space but also the functionality of it, the familiarity of it, the meaning of it and the usability of it, it actually turns into a very powerful tool which it was supposed to be originally in the first place. If you find yourself thinking that this is a trivial type of optimization for your workflow, I implore you to rethink your stance and try to kind of uh, approach it from a different mindset, simply because if you do look at it that way and you overlook it, you are overlooking an extremely powerful and meaningful organizational uh, tool that you have at your disposal on a books device. Because if you make this work for you, then you have at the fingertips with two gestures, so swipe down and a tap, access to some of your most important uh, functions. And furthermore, if all of your devices that you're using multiple devices on are actually organized in the same way, then that muscle memory of going to auto rotation, split screen, screenshot, etc, etc, is familiar and consistent. There is one final point to keep in mind when using multiple books devices and using this approach, and that is the inconsistency of functionality. So for example, I've organized this as same as I could between the Go 10.3 and the Note Max, but you will see that they are not exactly the same. Why are they not the same? Well, because scrolling screenshot 
doesn't actually exist on the book's 10.3 at the moment. Maybe when it gets its OS 4.0 upgrade update, maybe they will add it, maybe they won't. But at the point of recording this video, it doesn't exist. And it actually introduces an inconsistency that I'm not really happy about. So you can either keep it as such if that is a functionality that you are very much uh, relying on. But for me, I'm not really relying on a scrolling screenshot that much as I'm relying on the screenshot itself. So I'm just going to remove that. And I've also noticed that I made a mistake in my organization. And it's not the books drop mirroring, screencast mirroring that I am looking for, I am using for the screencast. So I'm just going to make that change here, I'm going to move it all the way up here. And I'm going to do the same thing in the other one as well. Like so. And now when I tap out and slide them down, I have two different devices, but I have the same exact control center here. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do with the odd functionalities that are inconsistent between the devices. Uh, if you want to keep them and live with the inconsistency or not. And for me, this is basically a starting point that I would use from this point. So you can use this guide and this type of approach as a starting point. Point. So as we said at the beginning of this, you start with the mindset of the bare minimum, less is more. And once you have something like this, and you get accustomed to it, you learn how to use it, and you are more comfortable with it, the natural process of learning and the learning curve of using a device is that you will become more familiar with what are the functionalities that you actually use and don't use and what do you need and you don't need. And you can adjust the control center in the future accordingly. So if you find that you're not using the airplane mode, you can just simply remove it. If you find that you're using some other options that are hidden, you can add them. If you find that the ordering is not really up to the specifications that you prefer, then you can change them. But the whole point with the control center is to transform it from, as we've said, an overwhelming chaos of unorganized distraction to a tool that is familiar, intuitive and simple to use, which then effectively makes it a very helpful tool. And I've done the third evaluation pass. And this is the final setup that I'm landing with as my starting point and organization for my control center. And you can see that I've eliminated the uh, airplane mode simply because I don't need it because airplane mode only disables Wi Fi communication and Bluetooth. And I already have the shortcuts for that. So I don't need it. And I've reorganized that the screenshot and screen recorder are next to each other and screencast and books drop are down underneath it because for me, that's what makes most sense. And this way I have a nice familiar type of thing that I can use with a lot of comfort. Oh, that works much better now, but it's by default. It sure is, buddy. But why? I mean, it makes no sense. It sure doesn't. You turned to the autopilot in your head again, haven't you? I sure did, buddy. I sure did. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.